Hope community, Liz Perkins here. I'm excited to be sharing with you today. Um, but before we get to the message, I just want to pray for us. So will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we, we thank you that you are with us, with each of us, wherever we are today. And God, we just want to take a moment and invite you into this space. We just want to invite you to speak to us. Whatever you have to say, God, I just pray that we'll have open hearts to receive. And I just pray that you'd help me as I speak now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, this week I'm going to be bringing you a message from the book of Colossians. And as I was doing a bit of research about it, um, I found that when Paul wrote it, it was actually in a time where things were a little bit uncertain and the church at Colossae were actually facing some challenges. Um, and in particular, there were some challenges to their faith. And that made me kind of feel like that is similar to where we're at right now with COVID-19 and it's a bit of an uncertain season things have been totally turned upside down in our world and here we are we have all had a stripping back and the change has revealed certain things for me I have realized that um, I'm personally spurred on in my faith and in particular um, in prayer by being around other passionate prayers I feel like my prayer life is a little bit boring on my own but um we were created for community. And so that's why I think this season has been tough for so many of us. How about you? Are there things that you have learnt or realized or noticed about your life as a follower of Jesus in this time? How's your prayer life going? Are you praying more? Are you praying less? Is there even a difference? How about reading the Bible? Are you doing that more? Is your Bible app getting a bit of a workout? Um, has it changed the way you read the Bible? Here's another question. Now we know that church has changed. Um, we can't actually physically meet together, but are you still choosing to carve out time to meet with your church family online? There is so much content online at the moment. Almost every single church has an online presence. And actually for me personally, it's been pretty cool because for Easter, I was able to tune in and check out a few churches Easter services and I don't normally get a chance to do that. So that's been really cool. The thing is, even with all these resources that are out there at the moment, we still have a choice with whether or not we will actually engage. Now it's so easy to sleep in on a Sunday. Perhaps you wake up and you scroll through YouTube, you might click on a couple of live streams, but you might only hang around for a couple of minutes. Maybe you do keep watching, but maybe you're just sitting there in your lounge room more like a spectator. It's a bit harder to do that when you're actually sitting in church. You've got the person next to you who'll give you a nudge if you're falling asleep or you've got the person on the platform like staring at you. You don't have that sort of accountability when you're just at home, especially if you're by yourself. So suddenly we're in this time where we need to take responsibility for our own spiritual growth. I actually think that's a good thing because it can be easy to rely on routine or just the direction of others. I know for us personally, this season has revealed that even though we talk about God lots in our home, we worship together as a family, we include God in everything we do, we weren't actually having intentional Bible study time all the time with our kids. I know, I know it sounds really bad. We're leaders at a church and um, we're not even teaching our kids the Bible well enough. Um, well, now we are regularly having little Bible studies around the dinner table and the kids are taking turns to choose a passage of scripture. And it's something that I'm looking forward to doing even after this season. I know that God actually wants to use this time, not just for things to be put on pause until we can get back together, but to keep moving forward, maybe even in a more rapid way so that when we're back together, we are even stronger and more unified in our faith. I believe that God is calling us to not just survive, but to thrive, and that God wants to encourage us and equip us to do that. 
As a leader in this time, it is really hard to be apart from the people that you've been called to lead. We love our church family. We love you guys. Um, and we have a heart to see everyone from Hope Community grow in their faith and their relationship with Jesus. I get the sense that when Paul was writing this to the Colossians, that that's kind of how he was feeling too. Um, even though he probably hadn't been there in person, he still felt like a spiritual responsibility for them. He was like um, their spiritual grandfather and he couldn't be with them in person. So um, he was in prison at the time, kind of a bit worse than lockdown, but he couldn't be with them personally. And so that's why he was writing this letter which is now the book that we know as Colossians. So I'm going to get you to grab out your Bible or you can grab your phone if you've got your Bible app. We're going to read from Colossians chapter 1, starting from verse 9. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honour and please the Lord and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. So today I'm just going to share with you really quickly four ways to thrive. And the first one is this, we thrive by knowing and experiencing God. The first thing Paul prays in verse nine, we ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. In other translations, it says to fill you or to be filled with the knowledge of his will. Knowing God's will is knowing what God desires. It's like knowing what his heart is. So let me give you an example. Dan and I have been married for 17 years now. And um, because he's spent a lot of time with me and he's learnt from experience that even though I want him to go to the shops and buy some bread and milk, he knows that I actually desire that he would also bring home some kettle chips, and a bar of chocolate. Spiritual wisdom is wisdom that comes from the Holy Spirit and it is gained through relationship with God. Knowing God's will is important because it gives us direction and purpose. When times are good, we need direction and purpose. But when things are a bit uncertain and up in the air, like right now, we need it even more. Now, of course, spiritual knowledge is good, but for knowledge to have real value, it needs to lead to something, to some kind of action. So let me illustrate this. When someone's at uni studying to be a paramedic, um, they, of course, are learning lots of specialized information. They need the information. It's not like they can just go out and decide they want to be a paramedic and start treating people straight away. So there is valuable knowledge and understanding that they need first. And then before they qualify, they get to go out and have some experience, some training. But that's not the end. It's not just the learning and then experience it, experiencing it one time. Then they get to go and actually be a paramedic. Number two, we thrive when our lives are fruitful. Verse 10 says, then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. The way that we live and the way that we continue to live is what matters. It's not a thing that we do one time, it's living. This is how we get to honor God, but we can't really do that effectively without knowing his heart. So we get to know God 
The Holy Spirit gives us understanding through experience and it leads to living the way that God calls us to, which is bearing fruit. Being fruitful means that there is something good that is being produced in us. And that's not just for our own benefit. It is also for the benefit of those around us and it also honors God. John 15 um, verses 4 and 5, they're a beautiful example of how God wants our relationship with him to look. It says this, Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, that's Jesus, you can do nothing. We need to be connected to God to bear fruit. And we also grow from being connected to God. The rest of verse 10 says this, All the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. You will grow as you learn to know God better and better. Let's just talk about growth for a minute. We've just released a five-day devotional um, for our Hope For Her ladies here at Hope Community called Bloom and Flourish. So I've been hearing and learning lots about plants and growth. So something that I think some people think about the Christian journey is that growth in God is automatic, but it's actually not. Just because you have been a Christian for 20 years does not automatically mean you are more spiritually mature than someone who has only been a Christian for, say, five years. When you become a Christian, the Holy Spirit comes and indwells you. And part of what he does is to make us more like Jesus. But we actually have to allow him to do that. He wants us to partner with him in this transforming process. If it was automatic, then Paul wouldn't have had to pray continually that the Colossians would grow in God. Growing in God is not just getting older and sitting in more church services and getting more years on your tally. It's about maturing and flourishing into the person that God has created you to be. And that requires intentionality. So Paul says the prerequisite for growing here is knowing God better. So let me ask you this. Do you know God better than you did yesterday? Or how about uh, last year or five years ago? Do you know God better today than you did before the coronavirus? We can't know someone better without spending time with them. And the good news is that unlike people, God doesn't get angry or offended when we aren't spending time with him. He's simply waiting for us to, come, to go and be with him again. Number three, we thrive when we operate from God's power. This next section of scripture is right what we are needing right now. Verse 11 says, We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power, so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. And all the home homeschooling parents and essential workers said, Amen. In this season, we all need endurance and patience. And when it's coming from the unlimited power and resource of our almighty God, bring it on. God wants to strengthen us and not just a little bit. He wants to do it with all of his power. That can be translated as all and every type of power or miracles or might. That's amazing. And that is how we will have endurance and patience with the power of God. We can't just conjure it up ourselves. We need his power and we can endure and be steadfast. And not just that, it's not just about just getting by from the skin of our teeth, not just surviving, but actually thriving because it says here that we can be filled with joy as well. In this season that we find ourselves currently in, we can and we should be filled with joy and thankfulness. Verse 12, may you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. Number four, we thrive when we live as God's children. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. 
verse 13, for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. This enabling is also an equipping. God equips us with everything that we need to live this life alongside him that he calls us to. If you are struggling at the moment, then this is great news for you. We can all have these things, including great patience and joy because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. When we have chosen to accept what Jesus did on our behalf, we have been redeemed. We've been made right with God. We have been called his children and we've been given access to his kingdom with a great inheritance. That is amazing. If you haven't yet made that decision to follow Jesus, then I encourage you to seek him out in this time. Maybe you already know him, but in this season, you just need a reminder that Jesus has paid for your sin, um, sins past, present and future. And he will always forgive when you ask. I believe that in this time and in these circumstances that we are facing, we can do more than just survive. With God's help, we can actually thrive. We can all have a season of individual growth and we can all be better and stronger because of it. So right now I'm just going to pray for us and then uh, Dan's going to come and share some words of knowledge that we have. So will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you for everything that you did for us on that cross that so much was paid for and taken care of and that it is a free gift that we can choose to accept. So God, right now, I just pray for those who feel like they need that strengthening. They need that endurance. They need that patience. God, I pray for those who feel like they need a fresh joy. I just pray right now that you would just wash over people with whatever they are lacking in today, God. We thank you that by faith, we can just receive what you have for us. And God, I just thank you for this word. And I just pray that all those things that you want to speak into our hearts will go in deep, God, that it won't just be empty words that we hear and then they're gone. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you love us and that you're with us and that you're for us in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, church, we hope that you were blessed by that message. We hope it's something that you can carry into this week and will continue to be a blessing for you. And that there's a word in this that this season is not just about surviving, but it's about thriving with God. Um, before we finish up today, I wanted to just share a couple of things around prayer, just as we would at the end of any service. We want to take some time to be able to pray for people, and maybe you're one of these people today. So we've set up our new prayer meetings on Sunday. We, we're calling them the Hope Community Prayer Rooms. They're online on Zoom. The information is either at the start or the end of this video so you can grab the zoom information off that but our team our ministry team have been praying this week and just asking god if there's anything specifically that he wants us to pray for um, this coming sunday and so listen in because this might be something for you some of the things they felt god was saying is um, he wants to be he wants us to be praying for people who have severe headaches uh, for someone or people with left foot or ankle issues uh, for people with stomach issues, and maybe this is a real specific word for someone out there today, but if you're feeling like you've lost ground in this season and you need restoration, uh, maybe that was you, maybe that's many people, uh, but make sure if that was you, that you get to the prayer rooms today, 10.30 a.m., and uh, you can have someone pray for you and pray for that need. And we're going to be believing in faith together that God's going to do something powerful. Of course, if you have any other prayer needs at all, you can still go there at 10.30 and there'll be people who are waiting to pray and maybe even prophesy over you in this season as well. Hope you're blessed, church. Have an amazing week and uh, press into God with everything you've, everything you've got. See you.